Well, good morning. Good morning. We got an echo in here today, do we? <laughs> so, yeah, it's good to be back. It's good seeing all of you. I mean, I really didn't go anywhere, but I was gone. So <laughs> that's the way it is. So it is indeed good to see you this morning. If you would all then uh, please rise and we'll begin worship. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are kept. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. us, O Lord God, in all our doings and with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, your God, that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord, your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous. And the Lord, your God, will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your t heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you your life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendant now may, may live. Loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The words of the Lord. Thanks. Here's the psalm refrain for September 4th. They are like trees planted by streams of water. Let's all sing that together. They are like trees planted by streams of water. 
planted by streams of water. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked shall be destroyed. They are like trees planted by streams of water. In our second reading comes Philomenon, the first chapter. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, your brother, our brother, to Philomenon, Philemon, Philemon, better, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to our Chippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God because I hear of your love for all of the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in, in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during the imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed and useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But... I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your prisoner, your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he was he was wrong, if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I have seen nothing about your owing me even your own self. Yes, brother. Let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. 
Confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The words of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory to the Lord. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the costs to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Most merciful God, you come among us in peace, yet at times we feel uneasy, unsure about what the outcome might be by embracing you and your ways. You remain faithful regardless of our failures, assuring us that you are with us always. May we be strengthened in this knowledge that we might help others to not give up hope. May we remember your call to aid those in need, seeking justice and mercy throughout all creation. May our endeavors be a blessing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. My dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus, amen. <clears throat> Many years ago, uh, I was interviewing for a technical advisor slash sales position at an uh, upcoming electronics firm. That firm happened to specialize in energy reduction use. It was, it was uh, kind of ahead of its curve, I think, at the time. So as I sat there and chatted uh, with the owner, his son, and his daughter, I was assured at that time that I would never get to uh, have a top position in that company in that uh, all those spots were reserved for family only. All right, I can live with a little nepotism. That's not so bad. You know, it would have worked out, you know. So then uh, he finally said to me, you know, the final step in getting that job then would require that uh, uh, my spouse and I would have dinner with he and his wife. Well, my spouse felt that that was kind of a ridiculous requirement in order to get employment and refused to go. 
I continued my search for employment. But, you know, it just goes to show that sometimes the easy things to do can be extremely difficult. You know, today um, we hear uh, another harsh message from Jesus. In fact, we've heard many of those throughout the summer months, you know. This, in fact, is the second time this summer that we have been told to hate father and mother, spouse, children, others, life itself. You know, it might be uh, hard for us to hear this, but listen to it, we must. You know, Jesus uh, has attracted a large crowd once again. So maybe we need to then ask ourselves, what are they looking for? I mean, perhaps it's just curiosity has uh, grown about them, wondering, what is all the hubbub about, you know? What is this guy? You know, some may be gathering, hoping that uh, Jesus would be the one who will defeat the occupiers, restoring Jerusalem to his power in the world. Others might be seeking healing miracles, while still others just wish to be recognized as viable members of society. You know, Jesus warns them and us that we cannot be his disciples. You know, perhaps a more accurate translation might be that we are not able to rather than cannot, suggesting that this is beyond our ability to become a disciple. Now, I'm sure there are many circles that would find that kind of distressing and that, you know, there are many classes and, and uh, retreats that are labeled, oh, oh, let's make you disciples. And, you know, we actually, we profess that we're to go out and, and make disciples of all nations. But it seems like this is something that may be out of our control, past our own abilities. So I think it would help us today in this particular lesson and all of the lessons that we hear that the suggestion here is to just stop. Stop about it. Sit. Think about what the costs might be. Carefully consider what's going on. Pray that the Holy Spirit might inspire you and lead you in a proper direction. That we should just stop, think, pray, and most importantly, be honest with ourselves about what we indeed are looking to do as disciples of the risen Christ. You know, it's Pretty amazing, I guess, uh, and when we look at our own lives and we look at things that, um, you know, when we confess that we can't, that is the opportunity for God to say, I can. That it would be more important for us to choose the more desirable thing in our lives, and that is to simply confess. You know, we're asked here to love good things less. I think this isn't a real call to you must hate all those other people, but what we're really asked to do is to not give any special treatment for friends or family. And that we would then see our family as a much larger community than what we could imagine that we would embrace the foreigner in our land, that we would accept people for whom they are, and that we could all grow and love and cherish Jesus the Christ. 
It's because we're going to have a hard time here. We all know that life is not necessarily easy at all times. I mean, uh, there are many hard things that uh, we have to do. And the world, they'll punish us for that. They'll punish us for not playing by their rules. They'll say that uh, we aren't playing correctly. That's the cross that we must carry. You know, we can see our own transformations, you know, and we must look at them and we must see them to the end. Because facing our own sin and shame and repenting is what our lives are to be. Otherwise, we're just ridiculed and labeled as hypocrites, that we're not committed to following all the way through on what we've said. And we have to reject the models of a life that we see around us that are shaped by the idols of our time. Family possessions, acceptability uh, by uh, the principalities of our world uh, uh, and the power that would go along with it are things that we have to be careful of. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing when you think about it. All organizations, church-wide organizations, or uh, governmental organizations, they do wonderful things and make these wonderful statements of things that they're going to do to make life better for everyone but then they don't follow through. They have no plan. They have no funds. They have no idea, but it was a grand statement. It sounded wonderful that we would do that, which just gives the world more folly to laugh at. You see, we don't know what all these followers wanted in this uh, uh, beginning of this thing. Uh, we don't know if... Um, what the, their whole deal was. And I guess it's up to us then to decide what our deal is. Where is it that we wish to go? What is it that we want to follow? Since it seems to be impossible for us to become those disciples... I think there's only one thing that we can do, and that would be to follow, to continue to follow our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because Jesus has the power to transform us. Jesus does indeed to have the power to give us the strength to see things through to the end of the race. Well, we hear plenty of harshness but it's all meant in love. It's all for us that we might indeed enjoy life. So despite all the harsh talk, despite all the, the things that we hear, we still follow. We've not given up hope. We trust in the promises that we've heard. And we still follow. We've come up short. We miss the boat every now and then. But we know. So we still follow. So the question we have to ask ourselves is then, who is this Jesus the Christ that we follow? I think the answer is, pretty sure and certain in most of our minds, is the Savior of the world, the one who will lead us into peace, the one who will grant us life everlasting. Amen.
Let us affirm our faith. Do you believe in God, the Creator? We believe in one God. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, child of God, who became a human being and lived among us. Experience and joy in the joy of sorrows and temptations of the human life. While he walked on earth, he taught and healed, but most of all he loved, and he showed us how to love one another. By us and for us, he was crucified, he died and was buried. And then he rose again and lived us on, freeing us and honoring us. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, poured out upon the early disciples of the day of Pentecost, and upon us in our baptisms. The Spirit has spoken through the prophets, and continues still to speak to us today, and joins us together in the body of Christ. Yearning within us to pray for those things too deep for words, nourishing us in faith, and bringing us to the wholeness of life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, for our bishops Elizabeth and Catherine, those in need and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnerships in the faith, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forests, for all that will yield fruit this season, and for streams and other bodies of water, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For the nations and those in authority, for the elected leaders of our towns, states, and country, and for international organizations, grant wisdom to those who govern and raise up citizens who make decisions in the best interest of, of their neighbors. God of grace. Hear our prayer. For all in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness, or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, 
especially those that you see in our, our prayer list and in our friends. And for all in this community who need your care, God of grace. Hear our prayer. For this community of faith, for all our labors, begun, continued, and ended in you, that they glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into their many vocations for the sake of the world, God of grace. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the saints who now free, who now rest from their labors. Give us faith, like them, to love you with all our hearts, and by your mercy bring us to ever, uh, everlasting love, life, God of grace. Hear our prayer. Gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. 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 May the peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace. of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest as we feast on your goodness. Strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen service to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it. Gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is the risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say amen. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the church say amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age that, rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son. Through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raise, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and hear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Things are indeed as printed in the uh, bulletin here. Uh, there's, you know, the Fortune Lake Fall Auction things coming up. That's pretty cool. If you like quilts, it gets a really beautiful work over there. It's worth just going over to see it, I guess. Don't necessarily have to purchase anything, but anyhow. Um, also, I don't see it mentioned here, and maybe Bonnie's got them all signed up already, but um, if you're looking to get involved in the crop walk, uh, Bonnie's are liaison here so she's got a packet if you want to get it from her and go out and seek some donations and you can walk two miles or three or none I guess <laughs> but, uh, you know whatever makes you work I guess so anyway are there any other announcements this day if not go in peace share the good news Thank you. oh I have one. Oh, okay